Our man Montes Curat visited the last major car show of the year, the Los Angeles Auto Show. The U.S. market, and especially the California market, he says, are key for automakers around the world. So, not surprisingly, there were 30 global debuts and 20 North American premieres. It was a challenge to see them all. The Los Angeles Auto Show is designed more for the general public rather than for the experts of the automotive world. It always draws thousands of car enthusiasts. BMW's M4 GTS made its North American debut. It's the group's second most expensive model in the U.S., and it caused quite a stir. BMW's Hildegard Wortmann says if anyone thought cars had lost their emotional appeal, they just need to watch visitors looking at the M4 GTS. Porsche also had plenty to pump up the adrenaline, unveiling two new models. First, the Cayman GT4 Club Sport. The 283 kilowatt mid-engine supercar is designed for club and amateur racing and is not certified for public roads. Sales started immediately after unveiling. Also making its international debut was the revamped Porsche 911 Targa. Porsche stands for a certain kind of lifestyle, a lifestyle that suits California, says Porsche's North America CEO Klaus Zelmer. Indulgence, great design, innovation, all these things go well with California. And the 911, and especially the Targa, incorporates all these things. Like the Carrera 4 and 4S, the new Targa models have a more compact twin-turbo engine, which replaces the naturally aspirated motors. There are also subtle changes to the exterior. Fiat has revived its 124 Spider with a new model based on the Mazda MX-5. And Kia unveiled its new Sportage. Matas has now left the showground for a short while to step out into the beautiful November weather of L.A. And to take a spin, he's going to try out Volkswagen's new electric Golf, the next model for the American market. Den E-Golf des nächsten Modelljahres für den US-amerikanischen Markt von Volkswagen. The car moves off almost without a sound. Mata says one battery charge will take you 83 miles. That's 140 to 150 kilometers. And that's pretty good. But the best thing about this car is that VW doesn't have to worry about emissions. That was the overriding subject at the VW press conference in L.A., not surprisingly. USA boss Michael Horn promised to do everything necessary to win back customers' confidence. As the CEO of Volkswagen Group of America, I can tell you nothing is more important to me personally than the satisfaction of our customers and to making things right with all those who have put their faith and trust in Volkswagen over the years. VW unveiled the new Beetle Dune, a streetcar with an off-road exterior. It's a cool throwback to the Baja Bug, complete with chunky rear spoiler and aluminum skid plates. Inside, the Beetle Dune comes with sportier seats, featuring optional contrasting stitching, as well as a leather-wrapped steering wheel. The Dune will be available both as a coupe and a convertible. And another convertible made its global bow in L.A., the Range Rover Evoque. Infiniti unveiled the QX30 crossover based on the Mercedes GLA. Mercedes presented the GLS, S Cabrio, and SL Roadster. Lamborghini was not at the show, but unveiled the Huracan LP580 too at a private event in L.A. The rear-wheel drive version of the hugely popular Huracan offers 426 kilowatts of power. Lamborghini CEO Stefan Winkelmann says more than 50% of the super sports car segment features rear-wheel drive vehicles, and Lamborghini wants to serve this market. Although the company's unique selling proposition is all-wheel drive, Lamborghini still wants to continue to market its two-wheel drive version. Toyota paid homage to the Back of the Future movies, showing off a modified Mirai fuel cell vehicle complete with a Mr. Fusion power plant and fake flux capacitor. 
But it wasn't all just science fiction. Toyota also presented the fourth generation Prius. 90 kilowatts of system power output allow the hybrid to go from zero to 100 kilometers in 10.6 seconds. The Prius is the first model based on Toyota's new global architecture. It's been totally redesigned and the driving experience has been greatly improved. Mata says there's one type of vehicle that is simply a must in the U.S., and therefore at American auto shows, and that's the pickup truck. A petite vehicle that could surely be squeezed into any parking space, not. Anyone got a ladder? It makes you wonder why the Japanese build such small cars, he says. This would fit between any cars or even over the top. Under the hood, a mere eight-cylinder, 6.4-liter engine with just 410 horsepower. He had to look up the fuel consumption online as he couldn't find it anywhere here. He found that it uses an average 17 liters for 100 kilometers, which he doesn't quite believe. He thinks if cars like this can be licensed in the U.S., then what's all the fuss about the diesel emission scandal?